Good afternoon, everyone. This is part five of the Grab and Go series. Technology and I have not been a friend today, so we have that um, going on for us right now. So hopefully all the technology aside, we'll be able to get through this tutorial of the slate coasters. Now I get my slate coasters from Johnson Plastics Plus. The ones that I'm showing you today are an old style. They've revamped it, but I am still, it's the method is still the same and the ideas are still the same. You can get onto Johnson Plastics Plus and you can find the slate coasters they are about three, 13 or so a piece. You can use them for a wide variety of things other than just coasters. So here are some of the products you're gonna need for this tutorial. All right, first things first, you are going to need for this, you're gonna need to go get those slate coasters from Johnson Plastics Plus. Um, you just type in photo slates and you will find them with no issues. You're going to need an easel if you decide to use it as artwork and you can get those from Amazon. You're going to need a sublimation design. You will need the green pad. You can also use a Nomax pad. It's a felt pad, if you will. You can also use that. Um, let's see. You will need a heat press, obviously, some heat tape, blowout paper, and that is the settings. 390 for four to five minutes or so. So that's what is going on there. Let me just get into where I need to be. There we go. All right. By any chance, are these the same ones I bought? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. All right. So let's get to it. All right, so first things first, you're gonna need those slates. Now these slates, um, these are their old style slates. The new ones have the, they're the mini version, if you will, of the regular slates that they have with all the cuts and whatnot. Um, this, they've changed that, they've changed it from this version to the newer version. Um, and, and that's what you have here. But let me tell you about slate coasters. Slate coasters are just slate coasters they will work really good for three tier trays they're going to work really nice for bathroom signs you could add a hanger to the back of these with some super glue or some e6000 make sure that it um the glue that you use can be used on slate because these guys are heavy the nice part is is if you do use them in the bathroom the moisture is not going to affect these like it would with mdf um, great for all sorts of different things. Like I said, I use mine for more of a decoration than a coaster. I use them on the easels as many little pieces of artwork and they happen to fit perfectly right like that. They are great for desk decor. So this is great for your office person, uh, great for teachers, uh, real estate agents who like to have stuff on their desk too. Uh, and this would also be something great for those real estate agents to put a picture of the house that just sold. They could give this to their clients as a thank you, if you will, on a little easel. That would be a really cute gift idea as well. First things first, um, make sure that you wipe these down. You could do rubbing alcohol with these uh, because they do they are slate. They can have some sort of a dust on them. So you could just wipe those down with some rubbing alcohol. Next, you're gonna need the green foam pad. Now you can get these very inexpensive. I just happen to have this one. It costs about $100 or so, but it fits big Papa over here. That's my big press. So you can buy smaller versions of these. What you're gonna do is you're basically gonna put your butcher paper down, your substrate with the image. You're gonna put your another piece of butcher paper and you're gonna lay this over the top of it. And it acts as a weight, so it can kind of get into all the crevices, especially the newer slates with all of those crevices in there. Next, you're gonna need some sublimation artwork. Uh, this is stuff that you can find Two of these, I just made up one of these today, but two of these you can actually find on my website. Just scale them down. They're made for signs, but you can scale them down and make them fit uh, these slate designs. You just wanna cut out your image. We're gonna do two today. I am gonna show you what it looks like to have um, some small wording on there because these would be great for inspirational poems and quotes and all of that. So we're gonna do the three today. I know, odd man out. So we have this, we're gonna keep right on going. 
you can get the green foam pads actually right from Johnson Plastics. They sell it. Um, so you can get it right from them. That's where I got mine. And they come in a different, a variety of different sizes. Uh, so if you're only going to use it for slates, you don't need the huge one like I have. But if you want more bang for your buck, you could always get the bigger one. And then you could just cut it down to sizes that you will need. Um, I personally like the green foam pad over the, the Nomax felt pad. The felt pad is a touch cheaper. But, um, you know, money is everything. And I would really like my product to be spot on. So I really like the green foam pad more than anything. So I have that. I'm going to tape this all down. All right. And we have our last one. Now one is a bathroom sign. One is uh, a uh, inspirational saying for a dispatcher. The other one is, so God created a farmer. Um, I'm kind of on that kick after making my God created a, a dispatcher design. So there we go. We're going to get some butcher paper to the bottom. Our settings are 390 for four to five minutes. Okay. So you're going to put your butcher paper down and then you're going to lay this down on top of it. We're going to test our pressure very quickly. Give me one second. I forgot to do that. So it's 390 for four to five minutes. So let's change the time. There's two. There's three. Mm -hmm. And here is four. Okay. So right now I'm going to check my pressure. Now you don't want the squish the hell out of me kind of pressure that we've always talked about. You want this to be a medium to firm. Okay. Now, I have the pressure with, the, with this. Now you've got to go back through and add the pressure if you were going to put the green pad on. Some people use it, some people don't. Like I said, I prefer it. Okay. You don't want it so tight that it'll crack either. And right, now that we have that all set, that is ready to go. We'll take off this one. We'll add our three back on. Now, if you have a clamshell, um, if you have issues with your clamshell and you're having pressure issues, add a little piece of folded up cardstock. You fold it about three times. And what you're going to do is slide it under this front. This will be a good, good thing. You're going to slide it pretty much under this front edge. All right. So if you were to take cardstock and fold it and fold it underneath this front edge, what it does is it raises this up just enough to help with any pressure issue. That's something that you should know about clamshells is that if you end up with a pressure issue with a clamshell, that's one of the first things I'm gonna tell you to do is to put a piece of cardstock, fold it over three times, tucked under the front edge closest to your stomach because the back end always touches first before it touches the front end. So you end up with a slightly little itty bitty microscopic gap, but that helps when you use the, um, the card stock. So we're gonna put this on. You're also going to need, okay, well that's on there. The reason it bakes for so long is because it does have to heat right through to that pad. Yes, you could probably find a, a smaller silicone mat. I've done that in the past. I've used a silicone baking mat. Um, just enough to kind of let it hug it onto there. And it, what it does is it pushes the paper into all of the crevices. Since getting the Novax pad, I do, do have a much better quality picture for that. Make sure you use for these. It's an absolute must that you use your heat gloves. These guys are beyond hot. All right. So... I want to make sure, and sometimes I'll even break out the oven mitt because they are hot. All right, so we're going to have that. Now, again, some of the things that you could do with these is one of, you could definitely put them on an easel. This is what it would look like for you on the front view 
if you wanted to put it on the easel. This is a great little piece of artwork. So you could buy a couple of these, great for teacher gifts, great for nursing homes, great for people who have small spaces and don't have a lot. These are like the tchotchke ready type of thing, but they're a high end quality. You could use these for the three tiered tray. They would look really sharp in that, in that farmhouse look that everybody's going for. Obviously, you can use these for office parties, ele white elephant gifts. They're the, 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 the possibilities are absolutely endless when it comes to what you can use these slates for. They're not just coasters. All right. So you think outside the box of what else you could use them for, gift them as, promote them as. I don't care what you use them as. But as long as you use them, this is probably the most unsung hero in the whole slate line are these little tiny coasters and what you can do with them and the versatility of them. Well, a gray pad from Coastal Work, it absolutely should. Um, as long as it's a pad, it's just going to push down on it. Um, and then you, like I said, I have the, um, I'll show you the one that I used to use. This is the macaroon mat that you could get at Hobby Lobby, Joanne's, Michael's. This is the macaroon mat. This is the original one that I used to use on my slates because again, it kind of pushes everything down in and creates a nice tight seal. So I did use a macaroon mat um, for that. So if you don't wanna go to spend the money on the green pad, you really don't have to. I recommend it, but you can use this as well. I know, teacher gifts for these are totally cute. You could put a picture of the kids in the classroom. You could put great inspirational quotes. Um, it really doesn't matter. They're just a nice little gift. Now, how can you package these? Well, I put mine with wooden easels. You could paint your wooden easels. You can even get the plastic easels, but I just like the wooden ones. I don't know why that is, I just do. You could get a fancier easel if you want. Remember, you're adding cost to that under 20 if you get a more high-end easel. Then what you're going to want to do is package it. Well, how can you package it? Wrap up your slate in some tissue paper, add your easel on top of it, and then what you're going to want to do is maybe you could put it in a box, you could put it in a really pretty velvet bag. I personally am going to put it in a box. I'm going to get something slightly bigger than a jewelry box, and I'm going to package it all together. It really looks adorable when they open up that box, and it has some weight to it. So it's not... Um, it's not one of those things that you, you give lightly, if you will, and it looks a little bit more high-end, a little more classy, if you will, uh, for a gift. Um, so think about it that way. We're almost there to where we could take these guys off of here. I'm going to put a towel down just because these are so incredibly hot. Don the gloves. Now I am going to look very quickly to make sure that my image is doing what I wanted it to do. All right, so what I wanted to do is a little bit more pressure, maybe a little bit more time um, on here. It didn't quite do exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to show you what it's like when you don't do it either. So I have the Nomex pad. I probably should have added another minute because I have that, or that green foam pad. I only did it for about four minutes. I probably should have done it five minutes. It would penetrate the color a little bit better. Um, so I'm now literally going directly on the slate. I'm gonna cook it in here for about another minute. It will get nice and vibrant and really pretty. Um, it does work, again, because this is an older style slate. I don't have as many of those nooks and crannies as a newer style slate. Now, one of the tips and tricks that Frank Wood from Johnson Plastics told me a long time ago was to do my slates upside down. Now, I know I told you to do it one way. Frank's also told me, and I do this with my bigger slates. I don't actually do it with my coasters, at least not these coasters. All right, so for my bigger slates, I do my butcher paper, my green foam pad, my transfer, my slate upside down, 
face down and then I put a piece of butcher paper over the top and what does is it pushes right into that green foam pad and the green foam pad helps to get in the nooks and crannies of the bigger slates so maybe a recommendation that you can do for this the newer slates that are out is maybe use go the reverse method instead of laying the green foam on the top and adding more time check this oh she's beautiful beauty miss beauty miss so then i'll burn my fingerprints we're good okay now let's take these off now when i tell you these are hot i'm not kidding these are hot one Two, three. Now, that is very small writing. So, the thing is, is are you going to want to be able to go like this? No, probably not. So, I would definitely recommend a much bigger writing. Um, and I did that on purpose so you guys could see that. Um, I knew going into it, it was going to be very small. Um, so, you're not going to be able to see all of this writing on here but if you go in and you find bigger writing the bigger writing absolutely looks fantastic wait a minute we'll go like that sorry those were the products we used one button here we go so as you can see that writing is very 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 small you're not gonna be able to read it so you definitely want picking out quotes make sure that you use a bigger font um, for that. Okay. So for me, for my slates, what I do now, remember, please keep in mind that the views on this are just my views and how I do things. There are about a thousand different ways to do things. As long as you get there, I don't care how you get there. All right. So for my bigger slates, I do my Nomax pad, I do my image down, I do my slate on top of that. I actually put butcher, pa butcher paper over my pad so it doesn't off gas. So it's pad, butcher paper, transfer. And then I put my slate face down, then much, more butcher paper on the top, and then I press it. Okay, so, but because these were the old style, you could do them try it out I mean see what works for you as you guys can see they have some beautiful images on there that you could definitely make this I love this one and then God created a farmer I love that one and then this one which is extremely hard to see even with a magnifying glass I'm not sure that I could read this but I could at least tell you because I wrote the whole thing that it says on the fourth day God create or God made a dispatcher God said I want someone who will get up before dawn be away from home all day miss holidays and family and work a 40-hour week in three days so God made a dispatcher and those are just some of the things that you can find I won't read you the whole poem and bore you to death all right there you go let me just pull this off how you display the toilet paper sign. So you could put this toilet paper sign on a shelf. You can put a hanger on the back. Just make sure that the glue that you use says it's for slate, metal and slate, because more than likely you're gonna use a metal hanger. So use a metal hanger. Um, I have triangle hangers that I could put on the back, but you wanna make sure that the glue that you use, and I'm not sure if the E6000 I have can, I don't have the eyeglasses on today, so I don't know, but you wanna make sure that you can use it for whatever it is um, for metal and slate. And then you just adhere it to the back and then you could just hang it. Um, if you want to hang little mini signs, that would be great. Again, you could put those on shelves. If you have some shelves in your bathroom, that would look really cute there as well. So those are just some of the many things that you could do with the slates that you could get from Johnson Plastics Plus. Please keep in mind, this is the old style. I just had a ton of them. I haven't gotten the new style yet. So these are the older style slates that they had. Um, the newer ones have the cut in uh, slate look, if you will, of the bigger slates that you guys are definitely know what those look like. Well, they have them in the slate coasters too. So they're just really, just really beautiful mini works of art that you can have for any project under 20. 
Let's pop up the products we used in this video. All right, the products we used again are the slates from Johnson Plastics Plus. You can get them for about $3.13. You definitely could sell one of them for under $20 with a little mini wooden slate that you can get off of Amazon. I'm an easel off of Amazon. Then you need a sublimation design. Any square design will do. Um, just make sure that whatever wording you use, it's not super microscopic small that where they're not going to be able to read it. I deliberately made sure that you guys could see what it looks like to have a lot of wording. You can't read it. So you want your font to be a little bit bigger. Next, you could use the green pad. You can also use the macaroon silicone mats if you wanted to, if you didn't want to go to the expense of the green pad. I happen to use the green pad. You need a heat press, heat tape, blowout paper, and then the time they recommend is 390 for four to five minutes on medium pressure. Now, please keep in mind, please write this down. Here's the order that maybe you should do them with, with the newer slates. You put a piece, uh, you put your pad down or your macaroon mat, you put that down. Put a piece of paper over the top of that. Put your transfer face up, your substrate face down. When you do that, then you're gonna put a butcher, piece of butcher paper over the top of the whole thing and then press. And you will get an amazing press on these. Here's again a look at the eye candy in front of me. There you go. And just keep in mind again, if you do have a clamshell, you have any pressure issue, you won't necessarily notice it with your smaller slates. You might notice it with your larger slates. All right, the, the larger slates, you might have a little bit of a pressure issue. Yes, the mat will help compass, compen, compensate that. Um, you will have that as an issue. I'm losing my words today. Uh, you can put a little piece of cardstock underneath to help raise it, but with you using the mat on the bottom, it will even out your pressure um, a lot easier for that. So even though, yes, on a normal play, on a normal thing where you have your clamshell, I tell you to put the um, cardstock under the front edge, if you're going to use the green pad on the bottom, um, then you won't need that cardstock. I should have said it that way. <laughs> All right, there you go. So this is what you can do with them. They make great gifts for just about anyone. If you want a small grab and go gift, here you go. So far we've talked about in the grab and go series are key fobs, hair ties, car coasters, the jewelry sets, and now the slate coasters that could be mini works of art. We are in day five of this series of what you could do with a grab and go under 20. Why grab and go? Because most people have to stop and think about when they're going to spend their money. Anything over 20 will stop them and make them pause. You have kiddos in school, you have offices having office parties, you have birthdays, you have all of those fun things. People are more apt to spend $20 very quickly without thinking than they will if it goes over that amount. So let's make some budget friendly things for all of our friends and our clients. There you go. Thank you for joining me for day five of the Grab and Go series. I'll see you tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time with another Grab and Go idea. Until then, I'll see you guys all later.